Welcome to the UGC EPG Patshala lecture series in computer science. In this series of lectures, we have been looking at the subject database management system. This session will be a continuation from the previous session on temporal databases. We have the similar learning objectives since we try to continue on the features of a temporal databases. Previous session, I have introduced on what are the specific features over which the temporal databases have been running. Let us try continuing on more set of features which a temporal databases would consider. So, temporal constraints include non-overlapping uniqueness and referential integrity. So, there are seeming to be an update operation and delete operation of temporal records with automatic splitting and coalescing of time periods. Not only that, temporal queries at current time, time points in the past or future or over durations. So, temporal queries majorly represent not only current time, there can be time points which can refer to the past and there can be future time references also. In, in case of unknown future times, as I have told you already, which will be indicated by an infinity symbol or over durations. So, there will also be predicates for querying time periods. So, these are some of the essential features that is part of a temporal database. To more understand on this temporal databases, we will have some background information relating to temporal databases. These temporal databases use some real world applications. Database users realize that when they added date columns to key fields, some problems might arise. If a table has a primary key, for example, and there are some attributes which are listed, adding a date to the primary key to track historical changes can lead to a creation of more than intended. So, as we have seen as one of the feature of temporal databases, time attribute can be one of the primary key, but by adding this time attribute to a primary key, this will track the historical changes that the database has actually to perform which can lead to the creation of more rows than intended. So, many multiple times because of change of time, many records will be created thereby occupying most of the data space, but then there may not have change of other value attributes. So, this deletes also has been handled in the similar way. If you look at this temporal databases, temporal databases has been initially coined by Richard Snodgrass, Snodgrass proposed it in the year 1992, which had temporal extensions to SQL. So, by way of projecting a timestamp, which is associated with the existing query, that is what we mean it as temporal extensions, that is on top of all the SQL expressions that we have been using. So, and be developed by temporal database community. Now, let us try to understand more on the time domain. If you ask in particular what a time domain would represent, it is a structure or a dimensionality and temporal inter indeterminacy followed by issues in representing values in this particular domain. So, this dimensionality seems to be a very interesting measure or very interesting attribute there, there could be several time dimensions which can be existing. Time is actually more complex than the spatial domain as the former's dimension are non-homogeneous. So, if you look at time, time has multiple dimensions and there seems to be no homogeneity when compared to the spatial database or spatial domain. Likewise, data modeling issues are first examined then representational alternatives are explored with frequent comparison with the space. Looking at the structure of the time. So, in previous slide we have talked about the time domain in terms of structure, dimensionality and temporal indeterminacy. So, we will look at more detail on the structure now. In case if we have a linear model then time advances from the past to the future in the totally ordered fashion. 
Viras in the craze of a branching model also termed the possible future models. There will be so many branches that will be existing. So, time is linear from the past to now where it divides into several timelines each representing a potential sequence of events. Recurrent processes may be associated with a cyclic model of time. Some of the major applications which use the structure provided by the time domain are academic domains include structure, accounting, data warehousing models, financial packages, geographical information systems, insurance applications, inventory applications, law, medical records, reservation system, scientific databases, banking systems and more. As we have looked at the structure of the time, this is what we have been mentioning it as a linear model. So, in case of a linear model, the total order on instances have been present or have been presented here. Say once a transaction has started or once an event has occurred, then I might update an event with a state of now and this progresses. Whereas, in a hypothetical case, I might use branching model which are said to be the possible future models. There can be branches with a tree rooted on now, where an event has been happening for course, but this is where I initiate on the roots. There are so many branches which come out of this now, which can represent different entities. So, directed acyclic graph would be the possible future to merge on multiple events like this. There can be periodic and cyclic time which might include weeks, months for recurrent processes. Time is not only uses structure, it also uses bounded values. Assume a linear time structure, if it is supposed to be bounded, so on a constraint of boundedness, it can be unbounded, it can be time origin that might exist on a bound from left or bounded time bounds on two ends. We might see some examples of these things and we might call for the nature of bound as unspecified and specified bound. In case of specified bound, the interval is known whereas in case of unspecified bound, the end point is not known. So, physicists believe that the universe is bounded by Big Bang theory which says 12 to 18 billion years ago and by a big crunch where we might not know the future. So, it is a big question mark many billion years in the future. Not only that, one of the other dimension of time is density which is supposed to be a discrete value where timeline is isomorphic to the integers. Timeline is decomposed or uh, timeline is composed of a sequence of non decomposable time periods of some fixed minimal duration called chronons. Between each pair of chronon is a finite number of chronons. Not only that, between discrete density there will be a part there will be a part of dense density also. By dense density we say timeline is isomorphic to rational numbers in contrast to discrete density where it will be purely integers. Dense density will have infinite number of instances between each pair of chronons. And finally, we have one more density value which is called continuous density where the timeline is isomorphic to real numbers. Please distinguish between three time dimensionalities, one is on discrete the second one is on dense and the third one is on continuous. Discrete is bounded by integer values, dense is bounded by rational numbers and continuous is bound by real numbers. Infinite number of instances between each pair of chronons and distance, is, distance may optimally be defined. We term the sequel which supports temporal events as T sequel which is temporal sequels which suppose the version of temporal sequel 2 supports time ontology, where 
the parameters that we have considered till now like structure, boundedness, density is also been clearly understood. For a T sequel version 2, the structure used is a linear time structure, whereas for a boundedness, timeline is bounded by on both ends from the start of time to a point far in the future. In case of density, this T sequel do not differentiate between discrete, dense and contiguous, continuous time ontologies. For example, an instant A precedes an instant B at some specified granularity. Granularity in case we mean small chunks of data. Instant A precedes instant B at some specified granularity where different granularities give different answers. So, distance is defined in terms of number of chronons. Not only that, ontological temporal types, there are certain ontological temporal types which we try defining here. Initially, we will try define on an instant where having defined a chronon in the timeline, a chron instant will have an event which is nothing but an instantaneous fact. Any fact that has happened instantaneously, we call the that fact as an event. Something occurring at that instant, we call that as an event. Event occurrence time, on a specific time when the event has happened, we call it as event occurrence time. That is supposed to be a valid time instant at which the event occurs in the real world. So, as we have distinguished between a valid time and a transaction time, event is nothing but a fact which has happened instantaneously, whereas event occurrence time is the fact at which a valid time instant has happened. Likewise, there will be an instant set which includes a set of instants and we have a time period which gives time between two different instances also called an interval, but there will be a conflict with SQL data type interval. We have time intervals which are defined as part of ontological temporal types which is a directed duration of time. There will be a duration, this duration is completely different from a time interval. Duration represents the amount of time with a known length but no specific starting and ending instances. There will be a positive interval and a negative interval. With a positive interval we say anything with respect to time which moves forward. So, forward motion time will be a positive interval, whereas anything which refers to the previous time that is backward motion time would be a negative interval. And finally, we have got a temporal element which is nothing but a finite union of periods. Let us try understanding how to represent time in T sequel that is temporal sequel. This T sequel supports a bounded discrete representation of timeline. Timeline is composed of chronons as we already have seen which is the smallest granularity. Consecutive chronons that means every fact that is happening consistently or consecutively may be grouped together into granules. So, those are said to be one granule yielding multiple granularities. Different granularities are available and it is possible to convert one granularity to another granularity by way of scaling. How are temporal data types? So far we have looked at the temporal data types. Now we will try comparing the data types that is available with SQL 92 where actually the temporal version of it started in comparison with the temporal SQL version 2 in terms of data types. SQL 2 included date as one of the attribute, time, date time which is the time stamp and interval. There seems to be no default granularity associated with it whereas T SQL, temporal SQL ontology extension provides one more data type which is called period which actually mentions the to date and end date, from date and to date. That is it has a time, date time and another date time subtraction of these two date times mentions the actual period value. 
Now let us try understanding on the conceptual modeling of temporal databases. Com conceptual modeling focuses basically on the application, the, to the application with which we are about to work, the major focus of temporal databases would be present. So this conceptual modeling will be technology independent, that means either it should be portable and also it should be durable. Not only that, by way of temporal conceptual modeling, we have user oriented queries which can also be written. And all these conceptual modeling techniques will be formal, that means it provides mathematical way of providing a result to it. Not only that, unambiguous specification is also been part of it. This supports visual interfaces like data definition and data manipulation. With data definition as we might also know, data definition languages include create, commands like create, select and so and manipulation like insert, delete and update. So this will be part of visual interfaces and this conceptual model is the best vehicle for information exchange and integration. Basically all the temporal conceptual modeling are semantically powerful data structures and it is very simple to understand data model in a case in a sense that few clean concepts exist which are already been made as standards and there are well known meanings associated with all the standards and the concepts that is it provides a well known semantics and there seems no artificial time objects associated with the conceptual models and if you look at the time time is orthogonal to the data structures associated and this has been represented as various granules. As we have already seen this the representation of conceptual model gives a clear understanding and it provides a visual notion, notation. There are intuitive icons and symbols as part of conceptual modeling. Orthogonality is one of the base associated with the temporal SQL. If you look at the complete ER that we have presented here, this is for a project and the employee. Say the by means of orthogonality we have three employees, we are trying to connect all the employee relations together in an orthogonal manner. A, a project where an employee works on and an employee might belong to a department, this employee is tried connecting with another employee table where I have an employee relationship between an employee department table from where I am trying to ex extract some of the other information like an employee who works for multiple projects in a specific department in case if I wanted a relation like that. If you look at first half of this ER diagram, this represents the project number and the project name of a particular employee associated with the department whereas in the second half of the relation, in the second half of the entity relation, we have an employee who has worked on multiple projects is associated with the department. Now if I try to understand both the relations clearly then employee must be, must be represented with employee's social security number, employee name, department and projects, but at the same time I will be explaining more on the life cycle. So between what and what duration a person has been working for this project and there can be overlap between the projects also. Say in case a person may be dependent on two different projects, so there can be overlaps that might exist for a particular project or there can be any individual instances over which a project can be executed. So that can also be presented. So this is that is the reason why as an employee we are trying to mention the orthogonal relationship here. Continuing with the temporal conceptual modeling, we have an explicit temporal relation, relationships and integrity constraints mentioned as part of temporal conceptual modeling. This supports valid time and transaction time and takes care of from the past to the future. The coexistence of temporal and traditional data is also being looked at, not only that there is 
there are a specific query languages associated with this T-SQL and this comprises of a complete and precise definition of the model. There can be a question on what temporal information needs to be enclosed as part of temporal conceptual modeling. So, temporal information associated describes life cycle of objects and relationships that is what I have mentioned in the entity relationship diagram. So, as part of enti entity relationship diagram I have told you employee has a life cycle. So, this can take part in the period that is to be mentioned as part of conceptual modeling. So, life cycle of objects and relationships, validity of information values like timestamp, ten temporal relationships like temporal link, temporal integrity constraints are also associated with temporal information. Just have a look at this temporal schema. For example, an employee has a person, employee is supposed to be a person with associated details, but an employee receives a salary, an employee works for a department. So, a department has a department name and budget associated and department runs multiple projects and an employee works on a specific project. So, we have a similar schema which represents temporal relation where the project has a specific duration mentioned and has a life span, life cycle mentioned as part of every relationship. So, you can ask me a question of what is this temporal object indicating? Say for example, in the case of the previous schema that I have represented, for a specific employee, there exist attributes like name, birth date, address, salary and projects 1 to n. Say for example, I select a specific employee, the employee ID is 403, E403, the name of the employee associated with the employee table is Ram, the birth date is 8967, address is Chennai and salary is 9000 and the projects with which the employee has worked for is, there is one project which is called ABS, say for example and the other project which is called RES, for two different projects this person has been active. So, between the duration, between the months 9, 2005 to 12, 2005, he has been active enough in working on the projects. So, there is an activity life cycle which is indicating between this duration, he has been active working on both the projects. Whereas, on a specific another instance, between 10, 2006 to 12, 2006, the project has been suspended. Say, say for example, RES being a project, this may be suspended for a temporary duration. So, with what as a duration, the object like projects is being active and when it has been suspended. So, the life cycle information on the complete detail about the project can also be a part of TSQL. Having understood on the term of life cycle in the temporal SQL, we will try understanding on the object life cycle or the relationship life cycle. So, this life cycle is to be understood from two different perspectives. One is called continuous life cycle, the other one will be discontinuous life cycle. With continuous life cycle, from the time of creation till the time of killing the process, the entire cycle needs to be understood. Whereas, discontinuous, I will create a process, I will suspend it for some time, then I will reactivate and kill. So, there seems to be a discrete time activity that is happening instead of a continuous activity. So, I repeat with continuous, we have a creation, we have a killing time alone, between that the overall process is trying to execute, whereas with the discontinuous life cycle, we have a create, in between there can be a suspension. So, we can suspend on it, we can reactivate with respect to the previous cycle we see, the, although the project say for example, the project duration is between 2005 and 2008 and if at all the user tries to understand when this project has been executed, then in that particular instance looking at a particular employee with employee ID E403 as I have told you in the previous slide, there is a discontinuous activity that is happening where I have created a project and after some time there has been a suspension of the same project for some duration say that is 
between 10 2006 to 12 2006 this has been temporarily suspended and has been reactivated and finally kill is to actually close the entire project so this seems to be discontinuous we will also try to understand the uh, initially we have understood on the temporal objects now that we will also understand on the non temporal objects so with the non temporal objects there will be no life cycle will, will be associated but there will be a default life cycle like activate zero command now that is at this instance we may have to activate so it will be zero command now then activate now command now and activate zero comma infinity so any of this can happen as part of the default life cycle and part of the non temporal objects will be a coexistence which will be like temporal to non temporal which will be just a snapshot of a data and non temporal to temporal which will be a default life cycle in short in this particular session we have looked at the features of temporal databases not only that we have understood temporal databases from a times perspective where we have seen structure and the different dimensionalities of the temporal databases like boundedness, density and so on. We have also indicated on the T SQL which is temporal SQL version 2 where, where ontology can be an expression to the time. So time ontology is also part of T SQL which wherein we have discussed more on the temporal conceptual modeling and further extensions on how to represent objects on temporal data values. So we have discussed on the temporal data types, temporal objects with certain ER diagrams and finally we have represented not only it should be represented in a temporal object type, it also can be represented with non-temporal objects. Thank you.